We are going to be considering the uh, continuity and types of discontinuity for this piecewise defined function given here in this example. So we're going to be looking for the intervals of continuity and at each point where we don't have continuity, so for every discontinuity, we're going to use limit statements to determine the type of discontinuity as well as one-sided continuity. So whenever we're looking at a piecewise uh, defined function, we need to consider both the pieces as well as any breaks in the domain. And so the pieces here, let's look at first. Okay, so the pieces here, it looks like we have three pieces, but truth be told, this middle piece uh, is only defined at a single x value. So that middle piece is really just a single point. And so we're not going to really need to look at that over an interval at all. And so we really have two pieces that we're looking at. The first piece would be this x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 piece. It's a rational function, and we know that rational functions are continuous everywhere except where the denominator is 0. And so we've got continuous everywhere except at uh, the place where the denominator would be 0. Well, if we set that denominator equal to 0 and solve, we'd be looking at the uh, solution x is equal to 1. So this rational uh, function would be continuous everywhere except at uh, x is equal to 1. But that's not that's not all we have to do when we're looking at a piecewise defined function. We know that x equals 1 is a potential trouble spot, but then we've got to ask ourselves, is that trouble spot of the domain within the um, restricted domain given by the piecewise defined function? So we take that x equals 1 value and we go back and we look at the interval of x's for which it is defined. And so this particular piece is only defined for x values that are less than 1. And so this x equals 1 value doesn't fall there. So we will say uh, this piece is continuous at everywhere ex uh, except at x equals 1. But um, that is not in the interval uh, that we have for that particular piece, so x less than 1. And so our conclusion here is um, continuous on the interval x, x less than 1. Okay. So that took care of our um, top piece. The middle piece is just a point, so we ignore it. Um, and the last piece is a line 3x minus 1. Well, lines are continuous everywhere, so they're certainly going to be continuous on a restricted domain. So we will say continuous everywhere, which means it's definitely continuous on the given interval x greater than 1 for this particular piecewise defined function. So by assessing those two pieces individually, we realize that we don't have any problems with any continuity within a piece, which means we've got to look now at the uh, break. So the break in the domain. We do some sort of switch over between all the pieces at x is equal to uh, 1. So we're really looking at x equal to 1 as our only break there. At 1, we have to individually look at the left-hand limit, the right-hand limit, and the function value. And based on those three answers, we can make our assessment about continuity and then perhaps any type of discontinuity or one-sided continuity if it comes down to it. So at this break, we are looking at the limit as x goes to 1 from the left-hand side of the function. Well, from the left-hand side of the function, we're talking about values slightly less than 1, so that would land in that top piece. So that limit is going to be looking at uh, the top piece. So the limit as x goes to 1 from the left-hand side of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Well, if we were to plug that in, um, we would get, and we can just do this mentally at this point, um, if we were to plug in 1, we would get 0 over 0, which is telling us we're going to have to utilize this cancellation here. And so we'll go ahead and just jump into that cancellation. We can factor the top, and we should notice that our problem factor is actually going to cancel, because the top is a difference of squares, x minus 1 times x plus 1. 
and we've got the factor of x minus 1 there on the bottom. So that factor of x minus 1 is going to cancel, leaving us with the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of simply the um, factor left over on the top, x plus 1. To compute that limit, we would plug in, um, and this is a one-sided limit, but really since um, x plus 1 itself is continuous, the one-sided limit would match the full limit. So we really are just plugging in the value 1. So we're looking at 1 plus 1, which is 2. And so that would be the value of our left-hand limit. So we got to go ahead and do the right-hand limit also. The limit as x goes to 1 with the little plus sign there of the function, the piecewise function. The plus sign is telling us that we need to uh, look at values slightly uh, bigger than 1 uh, for the domain values. And so that puts us into that bottom piece, that 3x minus 1 piece. Because that's where x values that are slightly bigger than 1 would live. So to take uh, this limit, again, we would just be plugging in because we have a line and lines are continuous everywhere. So the one-sided limit is going to match the full limit. And we're really looking at uh, 3 times 1 minus 1. And that value there would be uh, 2. All right. So now we have um, two one-sided limits, but we have one extra thing that we have to assess to be able to figure out um, what we're doing here. So we have uh, the function value. We need to know what's happening at f of 1. Well, our input value of x equals 1 is that middle piece that we talked about being a single point. And so the output value given there is the single output value of 0 without any computations needed. And so now we have um, both the left limit, the right limit, and the function value. And so notice that these three values that we're looking at, we've got 2 from the left, we've got 2 from the right, and we've got 0 right there at it. And so we see that those three values do not all match. And so since all three values don't match, we have that it's not continuous at, um, at x equals 1. So since it's not continuous at x equals 1, we've got to look at the type of discontinuity in any one-sided in any one-sided continuity. So the type of discontinuity we can get from looking at those three answers there. We see that um, the limit from the left matches the limit from the right. These two things are equal. The fact that those two things are equal are telling us that that limit exists. But since it's not continuous and the limit exists, what we have is a removable discontinuity. So we've got a removable discontinuity there at 1. Uh, for removable discontinuities, we never are going to have one-sided continuity, or else it would just be continuous. But we could get that directly by um, assessing what we do always for one-sided continuity is we look at the function value. Well, the function value was 0, and we ask ourselves which side, if any, does it match? Well, that function value of 0 does not match either of the one-sided limits, and so we have no one-sided continuity. So we have uh, figured out what's happening there at the single discontinuity that we have. The one other thing this problem asks us to do, and it's really uh, sometimes overlooked to answer every part of these kind of paragraph questions, but the one extra thing we were asked to do is describe the intervals on which f is continuous. So we are able to figure out the intervals on uh, the of continuity there now that we have our one problem place assessed fully. And so the intervals then are going to be um, everything except for uh, at x equals 1. And we don't even have any one-sided continuity at x equals 1 either. So we would be having uh, the interval negative infinity to 1. We would have open parentheses there. And again, we'd have uh, open parentheses 1 to infinity because we're leaving out our single place of discontinuity and we don't attach it to either side because we have no one-sided continuity. 
And so now we have completed our final um, answer there where we have, we assessed what the intervals of continuity were. And at our one discontinuity, we have both the type of discontinuity and we assessed what the one-sided continuity would be. So we fully answered our question.